What's up, guys? Welcome back. Good morning to y'all. We're back at it. This time we're in run eight. We're going to do some switching today. It's been a while since we've been in run eight. Uh, some of you have been asking about it, so that's what we're doing. We're on the fits. The fits is near and dear to me because uh, I did actually work on the fits every once in a while. I was a conductor back, uh, back in the day in real life, and uh, we would go down on the fits from time to time. So uh, we're in Oglethorpe. And we're going to be working the sand turn. We're basically going to go north, switch a uh, chip mill real fast, and come back. It's going to be a, a, a quick day. Yeah, it's going to be a quick day. It's not going to be bad. And I did uh, I did tame the beard yesterday, too. I finally tackled that job. I put it off for weeks. I really, I just didn't want, <laughs> I just didn't want to do it. It's such an ordeal. It really just is. Uh, power for today, the 6120 GP42. We're going to be running uh, a single engine. I guess the other engine's out somewhere. Maybe the other local's working or something like that. We didn't protect any locals down here. Uh, we really just didn't. Those were all Fitzgerald guys protected those jobs. So we didn't do... I remember one time one of our guys got called off the extra board. This guy I hired out with. He got called to work the sand turn one day as a brakeman. Luckily as a brakeman. Because the thing that sucked was that uh, he didn't know anything about the job. Like, we knew nothing about these jobs. It just They kind of just like randomly grabbed them somehow one day off the extra board to, to protect it. But uh, that was basically it. Like, we didn't know much about it at all. And so, uh, basically everything that I do know is just things that I kind of doped out along the way. And like, passing by or something. Or just, you know, what little bit I picked up here and there. But it's not a great deal, so... But we are going to kind of work it like I would approach some of the locals that I did uh, protect back in there. Ooh, she's in reverse. Never mind. Forward, Spur. Forward would be nice. Forward would be really good. There we go. Now we're set. All right. Release it. Pull forward. We'll get started. We got to do a little bit of work here in the yard. Before we get out of here, before we blast off. I think we're lined up and good to go. Looks like. All right, yeah, we're down the track I want to go. Yeah, we got to go down there. We got to uh, pick up our chip cars, uh, set a box car over. And then we should be able to go. We've got one train coming by us here. Should be shortly. And then we'll have the track from there. All right, let's get up here so we can catch up. So we can swing up as he goes by. Actually, no, we're not going to do that. Oh, there's our train. Nice. 214. This is going to be uh, back in the day. Um, it's changed around a lot, but I think back in the day it was to uh, Louisville. I'm trying to remember if it was Tampa to Louisville. For a while, it was Baldwin to Louisville. Louisville, Kentucky, empty auto racks. That was always a really good train to catch. It was always step on, step off. Wasn't ever a big ordeal or anything. Yeah, we're going to line that back to the siding and lock it because the dispatcher may need to use the siding later. At least that's how we're going to kind of role play it out. Like, he may need it back, so you line it back to the siding so you can have that, even though uh, it's kind of a small siding. You want to let me catch up or what? There we go. All right, let's go. Take him ahead. I think this is 10 mile an hour track. Now, I've been to Oglethorpe uh, in the yard. I worked in the yard. Um, I had to uh, bring a work train down here one time. We had to bring a work train down here and park it. Uh, we actually, we unloaded it. We had to take it to Chip Mill, which is actually the place that we're going to switch here in a minute. We had to take it and uh, we parked it on that lead down there and it had a galleon on it. The bottom car was a flat car with a galleon and a ramp. And uh, basically what they did was uh, we parked this work train on the chip mill lead it was a curve gang so they replaced rail and curves uh, and they were down there waiting on us so we took the train we parked it they uh, took the galleon they started it up they unloaded the ramp from the flat car with the galleon sitting on the flat car 
Then they drove the galleon off. And for those of you who don't know, a galleon's a crane. And then uh, they drove it alongside the tracks. There's a spot where they could kind of drive alongside and they just basically lifted all the equipment off and um, set it off to the side. So that was basically it. And then when they were done, we had to bring the train down here and tie it down in the yard. But that's like my only uh, my only experience with uh, with Oglethorpe. It's kind of limited. Been through here many times, but never really did much of anything down here. Man, 214 is kind of long today. Big train. All right, we're about to get this switch up here. Uh, so, yeah, one industry and back. Nothing super crazy or involved. That's one thing I've noticed people working uh, locals, especially like in Run 8. It's, it seems like uh, people had this like preconceived idea that the local works every industry in their territory every single day and that's not the case at all like that is by no means the case um i worked several locals where we worked like uh, one industry and that was it and we came back there was other industries on the job right like we definitely had other industries work all right, 214, train looks good, markers hanging. Uh, there was other industries, but not all of them are switched every single day. Like some are switched only a few times a year. You know, some may be switched uh, once a week or once or twice a week or three times a week. Some may be switched every day, some once a month, some once a year. Like it's just, it really depends on the industry, right? Like we had several that we went in like once in a blue moon. Let's get this switch back. And what we need to do is go down here and grab this box car. I'm going to set it over to the other track. We'll get that switch. <coughs> we'll go ahead and get this one too. So yeah, we never like, we may have multiple industries on that job, but uh, you definitely, you didn't hit all of them every single day. You know, like I said, you had some that you hit every day. I can think of one local that I worked a good bit. The main thing we did was we hit a big uh, GE warehouse every every night is what we did. We took 16 high box boxcars to this GE warehouse and um, spotted those up and then went back. And that was it. That was like 99% of the time. That is what we did. Every once in a while, we would have a plastic pellet hopper for this place and took those. And then even rarer than that, we would take uh, a center beam flat car of lumber to a lumber yard. But uh, those were like not very often at all. They really just weren't. Come on, get on up there. Yeah, it wasn't very often at all. It was very rare to do that. All right, that'll do. There we go. All right. We're just basically going to cut this guy off and set him over. I think, yeah, we're not going to lace the air or do anything like that. We're going to cut this guy loose. So let's do that. Let's open the coupler. And let's bleed this guy. There we go, good to go. And knock the handbrake off. All right, we should be able to pull him ahead now. I think what we'll do is we're just gonna kick it down in there. We'll try it, we'll see. We'll see if we can make it happen. You can kick in game. Just 10 feet. That'll do right there. Get our switch back. And we're lying on top of that box there. We're good on that one. Brakes are bled. Uh, one thing we would do in real life, like first thing you do before you kick is uh, you make sure your knuckles open, right? You wouldn't want the butt heads. Break your knuckle. Let's get it in reverse. It's kind of complex in game because you're doing the job of multiple people. Every time I like, most of the time when we kick cars, it was always with three of us, a uh, conductor, brakeman, and of course, engineer. But 
You can do it, uh, conductor and engineer, but we're doing the job of everyone. Alright, we got it in reverse. Get a little bit more independent. Alright, give me a kick. Yeah, right, that'll do right there. Now we're lining ourselves back in top of our back on top of our chip hoppers there. Make sure this guy rolls all the way down. He should. Hopefully he will. We'll see. Nice, got it. Alright, good job. This is one thing you always had to watch for. Sometimes they would stop short and then they would start rolling back on you as though you wanted to catch them, right? Where they got into the side of your train. Or uh, sometimes they would bounce off like they wouldn't couple up. They would, uh, they'd bounce off and come back at you. And that always sucked too. Like you had to always kind of, you know, keep your eyes open and make sure that something wasn't happening with them. All right, let's catch up here. Not let me, it's not letting me catch up. I thought I could, yeah, never mind. There we go. All right, now we're up. All right, let's take it ahead about uh, three, two coupling. Yeah, we'll grab these empties. We'll pull them. Uh, we'll pull them ahead a little bit. Cut off the other cars, and then we'll be good to go. It is going to be an easy day. We had, you know, you had easy days working locals. You had some days that were long days, and uh, some days that were easy days. You know, usually you kind of set yourself up for for certain days. You know, like you might have an easy day on a Wednesday. Uh, it it just it really it depended. It all depended on the local. Yeah, that's good right there. Let's hop down, lace it up. Make sure this one's open. Yeah, he's open, good to go. Let's see if the air starts building back up for us. I think it's closed on the bottom. I'm not sure. It should be. Um, maybe not. Maybe not. I think it just dumped on us. Yeah, I think it just dumped. It may be, yeah, uh, it may be open on the bottom. It could very well be. Let's fly down there and look. Come on, let's grab it. No, it's closed. Okay, why did it dump then? It looked like it dumped for us. Uh, we may have to do, uh, we may have to do like a shift F7 or something and get it back. Yeah, the air's just going down more. I don't know. Like, I'm at a loss. Everything's lace. We opened it partial and it went ahead and dumped anyway. Like, the whole point of uh, opening it partially is to keep it from dumping, but it dumped anyway, and then... Yeah, open, open. Yeah, I don't know. We completely lost our air. We lost everything. All right, let's do... Uh that got it back. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. Sometimes you'd see uh, you'd see weirdness in real life, like it wasn't unheard of. All right, we got to pull this guy ahead, but we got to double check our switch up here real fast. Make sure these are all good. Open up on the siding here. There we go. We're good on that one. All right, everything else should be good. All right, let's go ahead and take them ahead. Go here on this side so we can cut it off in the clear. Make sure we're not fouling the switch when we cut these off. All right, so we should have about five or six chip hoppers that we're taking with us up there. Yeah, let's make about three or four more to a cut. Yeah, 
just let him ease these along. All right, that'll do right here. Perfect. Did a handbrake on this bad boy. And we'll close you off. All right, let's take him ahead about three big ones to a switch. Actually, you know what? Let's just hold tight right here. Because I want to do something real fast. Let get us a little brake test here. All right, let's draw him down. That's good. And we'll check our brake cylinder. Yeah, we see it coming out. The brakes are applying. Let's put us a flag on the bottom here. We don't need any OT. We'll just take a flag. And that should be good. We can just leave this line in here. We'll have to uh, actually, let's catch up. We'll grab the switch onto the siding. We'll get it real fast. And then we got to talk to a dispatcher too. All right, that's good. Let's take him ahead. Oh, come on. There you go. Now we're good. Yeah, we'll ride these up here. We'll uh, we'll get the switch, and then um, we'll talk to the dispatcher. We'll talk to Auto, see about getting out of here. Actually, we'll probably just line it ourselves. There's no point in fooling with Auto with that. Let's make about two more to a stop. One more car, one. That'll do. All right, let's hop down and see if we're good. Yes, we are. All right, let's line this guy back. And we'll let him shove back to pick us up. All right, let's shove him back about five to pick me up. We're not walking today. <laughs> we're just going to ride. It's only a few cars. It's not like it's a big deal. Save yourself at least a little walking, right? So it looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, about five cars to take up there. I think we're going to have six or seven to pick up. All right, that'll do right here. Six or seven to pick up, something like that. All right, let's go ahead and catch up and uh, we'll be on our way. Nice, there we go. All right, we're in the engineer seat now, all right? Uh, let's do a few things before we go. Let's get those going. Uh, get our headlight on brights and we'll open this rear door to get ourselves a little AC a little poor man's AC All right, let's ease on up here and we'll see about giving ourselves lights There we go we'll line the north end of Oglethorpe and line us into ideal because uh, the place we're going to work is the facing point switch, right? We need to get around our trade and go the other way. And I've looked for places down there to uh, run around, like roll them by, which is something we do back in the day. I don't know if they do that now. They may not be allowed to anymore. We used to roll them by, roll them by, jerk them by, whatever. 
to uh, get them on the other side of your engine so you could go back the other direction. I used to roll them by a lot. Like usually there was some kind of little spot with a grade in the switch that was right for you and you could just roll them by and not have to go all the way to a siding to get around your train. But I can't find a spot. Like it's predominantly um, uh, uphill the whole way to ideal for the most part. It's like uphill, flat, uphill, flat, that sort of thing. All right, so he's up here. Make sure we got a light. Because uh, we call a dispatcher, right? And we say, hey, we need a light out of the north end of, uh, out of the siding, north end of Ideal to head north. And you'll say, come on, signal indication. But uh, you don't know what's like, it, it could be malfunctioning. You may not have anything, even though we do have a slow clear. But we can head on that way. A little bit faster. I think, like I said, I think it's a 10 mile an hour siding. I could be wrong, but I think it was. Slow her down a little bit. Got a slow clear out of the siding north end of uh, Oglethorpe. A732. Be able to get going good in just a second here. Yeah, it's 10 mile an hour. Okay. All right, we should be clear any time now. There we go. All right, now we got 50. All right, let's go. So uh, yeah, we'll go up to Ideal, we'll go into siding and uh, we'll run around our train and do all that stuff and then head back south and then we'll pick up Chip Mill on the way. Like I said, I don't know how they did this in real life. It, it could very well play out that way. Like I said, it's not unheard of. I can tell you right now, from my real life experience, the wildest local I ever worked one day, uh, we went 140 miles round trip for one car. Like it, literally 140 miles, one engine and one car. We went 70 miles south and then uh, switched them and then 70 miles back. Um, they needed that car badly. Like they were fixing to have a plant shut down. So that's why that's why we made a 140 mile round trip with uh, with one car, one load of plastic pellets. Plastic pellets could be pretty hot. Like it's uh, some of the bigger places, right? Yeah, they could. They it could be a, a hot commodity, and you could every once in a while they would tell you you'd have a switch somewhere, and it is like plant shut down is imminent. So that means you need to get up there and switch it and get it done. Because like we had some leeway as far as how we switch some places, right? Like you had, uh, you had industries that were daily switches that like you had to go switch these places. They were big customers. And uh, if you didn't do right, you would hear about it. But uh, we had other places it was kind of like, um, well, I, a good example would be like one local lot where we had to switch Georgia Pacific plant every day. And uh, we would take them uh, log cars and empty boxes and we'd pick up the load, the empty log cars and uh, loaded boxes. And that was another local where that was basically all we did. Like 99% of the time, that's all we did. We went to GP, we switched them, we went back and called it a day. Um, at the very end of our limits was a pulpwood yard. You guys don't know pulpwood yards is stick wood. It's been long gone for years now, but um, pulpwood was a, was a big thing back in the day. It wasn't even when I was working, it was starting to be phased out. There's only a few pulpwood yards left, but um, that one particular pulpwood yard was way out of the way and they were already kind of phasing those customers out like the railroad didn't like handling that stuff they didn't want to really have anything to do with it and so we had a lot of leeway to kind of figure out yeah, do, do we want to go all the way out there to switch those few cars to pulpwood or do we want to put it off 
And so most of the time, is that a road crossing or a switch? Oh, it's a, it's a switch. Never mind. Uh, most of the time, we would put it off like we just wouldn't go up there. You know, you go up there uh, every two weeks or something like that, you know, and switch them out. But uh, uh, a railroad didn't really care. Like, they didn't care if we switched them or not, I think, honestly. But uh, we always hit GP every day. Like, you hit GP every day. And like I said, if you didn't get it, if you spotted something wrong or didn't do something right, you would hear about it. Yeah, absolutely would. GP was a big customer. We had a few of those. The GE warehouse that I told you guys about switching was no one. That was a big customer. But uh, yeah, there wasn't uh, there wasn't a lot of places that were daily switches, and we we did have a little leeway to uh, work these places the way we wanted to, the way we saw fit, and. You know, you had certain days that you did certain things, like the local I told you about that we went 140 miles round trip for the one car. That was the turn point on that local, and it was 70 miles away. So basically, that usually was like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday job that you went all the way down there. That was like your long job, and that was going to be a long day because you just had to cover all that distance, 140 miles, and switch which usually on that job, it was the one place too. There was a few other places that you would get from time to time, but that was basically it. All right, this is the feed mill here. That big feed mill, they do uh, chicken feed. They get in corn, they get uh, grain trains, corn. And uh, basically make it into chicken feed. There's their, uh, there's a power from the grain train tied down. All right, chip mill should be right up here and around the curve. chip mill switch so we'll go right on by we don't have a good a good way to run around our train like uh, a good way to run around our train here so unfortunately we need to go up to uh, ideal and run around it make sure our line is in ideal yeah okay we're good and we got approach medium on distant to ideal a732 One thing about this train is is so short, right? It's like it's either wanting to slow down or speed up. 0.5% grade through here. Yeah, it's predominantly uphill to ideal. It's really it's predominantly uphill all the way to uh, to Malk. You got a little bit of a knot there at the south end of uh, ideal, but not much. That's pretty much it. seeing how we do this yeah we'll just leave them in the siding and uh we'll cut off go to the north end and then run around and come back and grab them <coughs> that's the best way i know to do it in there yeah I always I liked uh, working locals for the most part they're pretty good jobs they weren't too bad some were better than others 
There were some that I uh, I preferred to work definitely over others, but um, they weren't bad. They usually gave you days off, and you couldn't beat that. I'm even approaching to the siding south end of Fort Hill, day 732. Actually, we need to see about cutting these off in here. Should have swung down back there at the south end, I wasn't thinking. Let's go ahead and stop this guy here. We'll hop down here in just a second. Alright, that's good. Let's go back here. We'll cut these off. Put a handbrake on it. Close angle cock, open the coupler. Pull my head just a little bit, then we'll catch up and be on our way. All right, sweet. He's going to be good right there. Let's go ahead and hop in. We'll head to the north end. Alright, this is going to be a 25 mile an hour siding, of course. And we'll see about getting light on the north end here. There we go. Alright, good with that. Watch your speed getting a little bit fast. And then when we get on the main line, we're coming back to go to the south end there because we are a, a light engine's 30 mile an hour max, at least it was back in the day. Maybe it's changed. I don't know. I definitely, I remember that rule because it's, that was one of the first ones that I ever got busted on. I wasn't even like I was a cub. I was just training this old head crew. <laughs> and we we were running light engine uh we were going from our little yard down to this industry to grab a few cars real quick it wasn't a big deal at all and uh of course we're running light engine and we went across the defect detector at uh 40. the defect detector our defect detector is called the speed out and uh, and how many axles so it said uh four axles 40 mile an hour and uh our train master was uh <laughs> was there in town and heard us heard us going over that dd he saw us later that day and he's like i heard y'all uh hit that dd at uh 40 mile an hour light engine we're like oh yeah we did like can't be doing that <laughs> you know he was always so cool about that stuff like he didn't really he didn't get on you too like too hard unless it was something like really seriously bad and in, in like I guess the best way to put it would be like some people you just knew just weren't careful out there like they just weren't very careful out there at all kind of by the seat of their pants so all right we'll ease up here looking out i know we got a light but role playing it out we'll say we call the dispatcher up say we need a light out of the north end of uh ideal he says come on signal indication so you don't know stress that many times you don't know just because he tells you you have a light doesn't mean you've got one it could have dropped 
and then you'd be in trouble and you'd be the one that got fired. Uh, yeah, we do have a lot. We got a medium clear out of the side. All right. Kind of a lot to do for um, five chip hoppers. You know, in real life, they could have run this job. They could have done more. Like, they could have gone to Brown Sand and just got it and never made a special trip. I mean, it's hard to say. Never say never on the railroad, though, right? You don't ever really know. Some weird things happen on the railroad. Like I said, we went 140 miles of one plastic pellet hopper, so... Or 70 miles one way. We came back with the empty. At least one empty. Really, like, we could have left the empty there and just got it the next time we went down there, but then we would have been a 30 mile an hour train for 70 miles because we were light engines, so... That's why we brought the empty back with us, the one empty. Went down with one car, came back with one empty. Double check our time here. Still looking good on that. All right, A732, got a meeting clear out of the siding north end of Ideal. We know what our engine is, 6120 north outs. Now we get to run long hood forward. That's always going to be fun. It looks cool, right? Like it looks awesome, but man, it's a it, it's a pain. Like it can be kind of a pain. And you know, the old Southern and NS engines were set up better for it than we were. And the and the thing was running long hood forward for us. Like the whistle post was always on the opposite side from the engineer most of the time. So. As a conductor, you'd have to call it out. Yeah, usually I'd go, you know, the one engineer that I did that with, um, he'd want you to call out whistle post. So you go, whistle post, and then he'd start blowing. That yeah, should be good right here. Oops, wrong one. In the wrong button. Might help to hit the right one, Spur. There we go. All right, we're set. All right, there we go. All right, we got to get us a light going back the other way. So we call up the dispatcher. Oh, shoot. I just gave us a light back into the siding. That's not going to work. I have to run time on that now. Uh, you call them up and say we got to go back south. A lot of times they know. They kind of know what you're doing. You know, so they'd already have it lined up for you, but. Or they may ask you, you know, they may be like, uh, what do you need today? You kind of give them a game plan, let them know what you're doing. Let's get her switch back. That one back. All right, there we go. We're good with that. Yeah, let's knock the brakes off, head back the other way. Of course, the, uh, the conductor would call our signal on the other side. Like I said, you can't see Jack, right? Like, you really just can't see anything. And now... We're going to be a 30 mile an hour train. Light engine, 30 mile an hour for us. If you're uh, if you're multiple engines, if you're a consist, then you could do you could do line speed. If we had two, we could do line speed totally. If we had one engine and one car, we could do line speed. But because we're a single engine, we can't. At least the best I can remember it. Watch the defect detectors; they'll tell on you. <laughs> They'll tell on you. None of these in game call out the speed. All of them, like, across the entire pits. That's one thing. They all call out speed. In addition to length and, um, 
length and axles and stuff like that. Later on, I think some of them may have done temperature too. I'm not sure. I We still like... When I worked, we still had a lot of the old, uh, the old talking uh, defect detectors, right? The old voice wasn't the newer stuff. We, I think we had one or two that had been replaced, like upgraded, but a lot of them were older. Yeah, as you can see, long hood forward sucks. Like, it's not a great view. It's really not. I mean, it puts a lot of distance between you and the pilot in case you hit something, right? Like, that's a plus. Puts you further away. But uh, the view in these curves just really sucks, man. This is kind of a smaller engine, too. Imagine doing this on, like, a, a big SD45 or something like that. There we go. There's our cars. All right, we'll start slowing up a little bit. Oh, we can swap over to the other side. I can't remember. There's a way we can go to the other side. Yeah, if I was paying more attention, we should have shot, like dropped those right at the uh, at the switch. They're not too far away. We could have just like dropped them right here. That way, just grab them and go. So we'll stop here. Uh, dispatcher line is back in on top. He'll have to give us permission by the stop. Because these old searchlights only had uh, three lenses in it. They only had three possibilities. Red's one of them. And then um, you could get a medium approach in or a medium clear. So that, uh, you know, red yellow green is your only three options you could have you couldn't get an approach or uh a restricting in so uh what you would do is you call him up and say we need to get lined in on top of our train in the siding there and he'd say all right a732 with lead engine uh, 6120 has permission by the stop indication south end of ideal Main deciding, switch in motor, looking out for train ahead or track conditions ahead, actually, because he doesn't know. It could be a broke rail between you and your train. I mean, they could say train ahead, and they did from time to time back then, but I think technically that wasn't... Maybe that wasn't right, because they didn't know. You know like I said, they, they don't know what's in there. They know your train's in there, but they don't know, like, what the condition and everything is. It's, it's all like, on the railroad, it's all basically a CYA thing, right? <laughs> it's constantly what that's about. And there, you get slowed down a little bit here. So yeah, he would talk you by. On top of your train. Um, sometimes if you had to do switching on a power switch where you're going back and forth between the siding and the main like that uh he would give you permission to uh, put the switch in hand throw and then you could control it and you could go back and forth as many times as you wanted and then when you're done you'd let him know give it back to him all right let's ease on up here There we go. Nice. All right, let's hop down. I don't think I closed the, uh, yeah, I didn't close that angle cock back down here. I should have done that. I mean, technically not. That would have been bottling the air, but we could have swung down at the south end there, got in the clear, opened that one, dumped the air, and then, you know, there's a few different ways. We've done it before, but Close this guy. Let's rehang our flag. 
It's only five cars. It's not like it's a lot. Open this guy up. Laser air hoses. If it'll work right this time. Give it partial. It should come right back up. There we go. Alright, yeah, it's charging good this time. I don't know why it didn't last time. Yeah, that was definitely kind of weird. Alright, I think we're good. Get ready to go back south. All right, so now we need another light out. Knock that one down. That's got to run time. Alright, there we go. Now we can go back the other way. Um, we'll go all the way back to Oglethorpe. Yeah. Looks like we left a, uh, a switch open on the siding. I didn't think we did. I thought we put it back, but maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't. I could have swore we did. Alright, let's go. Your handbrake off, we'll do it with F5. See if we can see this light a little better here. Alright, A732 got me and clear out of the siding south end of Ideal. 6120 south out. Alright, so we'll head to Chip Mill and uh We'll line ourselves in and back in on top of those cars we need to grab. Basically how it's going to go down. We'll go ahead and leave out. If we're a short train, we'll be out of that switch before you know it. All right, 40 on the diamond board. Of course, now we can do line speed because we're an actual train. We got multiple cars with us. We're not light. Yeah, it's a little bit of work having to get around your train like that. It is what it is, though. Like, if that's the only way you can do it, then you just got to do it. All right, 50 on a diamond board. Like I said, a lot of times we roll them by. If there was a spot where you could roll your cars by, you would absolutely do it. There's lots of different ways you could do that. Uh, we had it depended on how you wanted to do it like you could um, a lot of times like you bottle the air leave the brakes off bottle the air and the conductor would swing up you would cut the engine off put it in the clear and then knock the handbrake off and let them start rolling and then when they rolled in the clear you could reach down with your foot and bust the air open that way some guys use handbrakes you know it just it depended it depended a lot of times the bottle of the air though and then just bust them with your foot a little bit dicey it was a little bit of a dicey move right <laughs> bust them. i'll never forget when i was working the ge local at the ge warehouse one night i was breaking it on it and um what we would do on that one is we'd go a little bit north past the GE place and we'd stop short of this uh, switch that that place took a uh, plastic pillow hopper. So we stopped short of it. There's a facing point switch. I'd get down, I'd line us into that industry 
uh, the conductor would go back and make the cut and he'd bottle the arrow in the cars and he'd catch up and then we would have the engineer kick the cars back uphill. So he would kick them, he would reverse and kick them uphill. And then, um, and then he would pull forward and clear up in that industry and I'd throw the switch behind him. That way he's lying back down to main line. Well, just about when we would be finishing that up, Um, the cars would be coming to a stop, right? They'd be coming to a stop and then they'd start rolling back the other direction. So it gave us a little time and, um, they'd start rolling back by and the conductor would ride them by. And then as soon as he would clear the switch, I would tell him that he's in the clear and he would bust the air. Well, on this one particular night, I told him he was in the clear, but the cars just like, they kept rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And they weren't like, he wasn't stopping until they literally rolled uh, into the darkness, like went right on by and kept going. And I was like, oh shoot. I was like, he's not stopping. Like they literally disappeared into the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> we called him on the radio. We we're like, did you get him stopped? Are you, are you stopping? Are you okay? And he's like, yeah. Or I think we didn't say too much on the radio because we didn't want to give away what was going on, right? Like he didn't want to let anyone know that you messed up or you had a problem. So we may just ask him if he was okay. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm good. Come on down here and get me. So, uh, we go down there and, uh, I talked to him and he's like, yeah, he's like, <laughs> he said, he said, I couldn't reach the, uh, I couldn't reach the angle cock with my foot. Like he had to, he really struggled to reach it. Like it just, it was something about that car. He couldn't get to it with, <laughs> with his foot good. And, uh, he said he almost wasn't able to stop it. All right, let's get, can we remove it? Yeah, let's remove that. We don't need it. Let's remove. Come on. There we go. Nice. All right, let's swing up. Yeah, he almost wasn't able to stop him because he couldn't he couldn't reach it with his foot. Like I said, there was something about that car. And from that point on, it always it kind of spooked me a little bit because I was like, you know, before you do it, you better make sure you can reach. You better make sure you can reach that angle cock before you commit, because if you commit and you can't reach it, then you're like, you're in trouble, right? They're going to go a little ways before they finally stop on their own, but. All right, we'll shove in here about 10. So yeah, this is chip mill loaded uh, back in the day it loaded uh, of course wood chips wood chips and these big hoppers it, I, I think this place was kind of an on and off again place like I think there was a while that it was shut down and they didn't do anything here and then like then it would and then it wouldn't or something I want to say when we came down here with the work train it wasn't doing anything I could be wrong, but we basically, we parked the work train right here and they took the galleon off and then they ran it alongside here and just lifted all the stuff off of it. All right, keep shoving. Keep on and keeping. Make about four to a stop. All right, three more cars, three. Two cars to a stop, two. There, yeah, one more car, one. Get up here a little bit closer. All right, anywhere in here will do. All right, that's good. Let's swing down. And we'll see what we got. So we've got uh, three empties here that have been left from the last time waiting to be spotted. And then we got some under loader down there. And then our loads are on the bottom too. Like sometimes you'd have to dig cars out. Like that's another thing. It wasn't always like a, a pull everything and replace it. 
that's something else you see a lot in like railroad simulation is like pull everything and replace it it wasn't yeah it wasn't like that at all like sometimes you had to kind of dig for stuff so we've got uh we've got three under the loader let's see if this one is ready I think it is. We'll pretend we're climbing up on it here and looking. Yeah, it's loaded and ready to go. Uh, and then we got three more. Yeah, six more down there. So what they do sometimes is they, uh, it depends on the place, but they'll have like a cable system that they hook them up to that they can kind of pull them under the loader and then they'll pull them out of the way down here and just keep pulling them down. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loads. And then we got the rest of these empties to spot up. And a lot of times, like at least some of the chip places I work, they did them in like groups of two or three because that's what they could handle. Their uh, their little system that they had. Uh, I've seen some places you use like farm tractors to do it. I think Portwood Yards used to use loaders, the big uh, like big forklift loader things they they weren't really forklifts they had slings that they used but all right let's shove back about uh good half to a coupling all right 20 feet five feet five That'll do. There we go. Sweets. Alright, what we're going to do is we're going to pull on them, make sure we got them. Get all the handbrakes knocked off. Alright, we're good. Alright, we'll gather everything and then set the loads out on the main and then come back and shove our empties in here. Man, you have to be like right up against this thing to catch up. There we go. Now we're going. All right. One and a half to a stop. There, right, one more car. One. Of course, you could just swing down right before you couple if you wanted to. All right, half car. Yeah, that'll do right here. Yeah, right, let's go to the next one. Make sure these are lead. Oh, I can't bleed them. We don't have them yet. Never mind. We'll just wait till we couple up to them. All right, let's make it one to a coupling. I tell you what freaked me out about these cars. You notice they got the high mounted handbrake. A lot of them had had to move down to the bottom here, but uh, some of them still had the high ones. All right, that'll do. Some of them still had the high ones. And uh, man, they were up there. Like they were really up there and you got that little bitty porch that you had to stand on and like stand on that, you know, the ladder and the porch and all. And then of course they would be like tight. You know, a tight handbrake that you couldn't get knocked off. And yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit antsy doing that. All right, let's hop up. Let's see, knock the handbrake off. It'll do it. Doesn't look like it wants to go. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Take a little more throttle. All right, let's show back about two to a stop. This is so typical, like typical wood chip and <laughs> wood operations, that kind of stuff. 
Oh, wood cars always suck. They always had the worst handbrakes on them. Like they were always like, I don't think I ever had one that was easy to knock off. All right, that'll do right here. All right, let's shove a half to a coupling. All right, 20. In. Keep shoving, keep shoving. Must be a little great in here. Like, we must be shoving uphill a little bit. Come on. Five feet, five. That'll do. Sweet. All right, let's make sure these are bled. Usually they wouldn't have any kind of air on them. And we'll get the handbrakes. They're all going to have handbrakes, but usually it'll just be like one of them. Sometimes more, it just depended. All right, that's good. Uh, let's see, we got, we're good with that. Go to reverse, all right. Get up here so we can catch up. All right, let's take him to the switch. We'll catch up on the bottom here and ride it. If we can, hopefully we don't miss it. There we go, we got it. All right, let's take him to the switch. Up and in the clear. I keep forgetting that. Like I try to go through the motions of how we did it. Like you'd say uh, switch is lined in the clear. Shovel them back, whatever. I always forget that now. It's been a while. It's been a few years. I remember it from this point on. We'll try. We'll see. Of course, we wouldn't be able to ride under a loader like that. would be close clearance. We'll do it. We'll fudge on that. We, that would be a close clearance. Yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be tight. You could just swing around on the bottom over here. Just hang on to the bottom of it. It wouldn't be too much of a problem, but yeah, that's something you got to keep an eye out for. Close clearance is, would suck getting rolled up in between a car and something like that. It happens. People have been killed doing that. There's our power. You see our power way in the distance going around the curve there. Coming out on the main. Yeah, she's a little draggy. We need some more powers. We need some more powers on the train. Let's make it about eight or ten to a stop. We are switch coming right up here, right? Right here. I can't tell where it's at. It should be right in here. Uh, about two more. No, we still got a little ways. Keep going. Never mind. Keep going. Keep going. There it is. I can see it. Yeah. It's kind of blending in a little bit. All right. Three more to stop. All right. One more car. One.
All right, anywhere in here will do. All right, sorry, let's line our switch. All right, line our switch back on the main, and then we'll shove these loads in the clear. All right, switch is lined in the clear. Come on, let's go. Man, she's just not willing to do. We're going to have to put air on this thing. Like, I thought everything was bled off. It should be good to go. Doesn't seem like she's wanting to do anything. What if there's a handbrake on this thing or something? Yeah, something doesn't seem right. It, she seems really draggy. I mean, I we've got a few loads. We got some empties. It's decent, but we should be able to handle this. Yeah, it's got some cars. Yeah. It's got a car with. All right, I see what the problem is. Let's lead that guy. Yeah, that one does too. Yeah, I should go ahead and bled all of them. I wasn't thinking. There we go. Now we're good. All right, switch is lined in clear. Let's uh, show them in the clear here. Now we got it. Now we're cooking with gas. So I think we're setting over seven, right? I think so. Yeah, I think we're setting over seven. There, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, should be this next uh, CSX car where we make her cut. All right, anywhere in here will do. We'll double check. We'll hop up there and look. Yeah, okay. That is where we want to make her cut. Let's get that handbrake there. That should be good for those. All right, let's need a little slack. All right, come on. There we go. Took a little bit, right? All right, that's good. All right, let's take my head to switch. Three to a switch. fun doing this multiplayer. It's been a long, long time. I've done this multiplayer before, but it's been a really long time. You can pretty much do it exactly the way it is. Or pretty dang close to it. Alright, one more car one. So yeah, we'll spot this guy up under the loader and then we should be good to go. Like, we'll cut it off. Alright, that'll do right here. 
get that guy line back. And we'll catch up. Back forward. All right, switch is lined in and clear. Let's uh, shove him about 10. You're independent knocked off. Like I said, we're doing all the things. It's a little, it, like, it's a little involved when you're doing it by yourself. Unless you want to slow down. Yeah, it must be uphill in here a little bit. Honestly, I don't know. All right, looking good. Keep shoving another 10. Or well, kind of hard to judge distance in here. Like it's, it, I don't know. I think that's probably for any game, right? Like any any virtual game you're playing or anything you're looking at virtually, like the depth perception is not the same. All right, five more cars, five. All right, three more cars to stop, three. Three cars, two. One more car, one. Let's go ahead and start easing them down. All right, anywhere in here is good. Yeah, let's hop down. All right, down in the clear. Let's shove them about one more to a spot. I have to get the start the like the very end of the car right under this. All right, half car, half. I always like the wood chip hoppers. I thought they were cool. All right, twenty feet. Ten feet. All right, that'll do. Yeah, that's good. That's good right there. All right, let's go down three. We'll make a cut. Your handbrake. Nope, wrong one. Never mind. Wrong one. That's two. We need three. That'd be it. All right, let's take him ahead a little bit, make a cut. That's good. Nice. So we've got their first three cut off and spotted up for them. They can grab what they need off of these from that point on. Like, we don't have to keep cutting them in threes. They'll just get what they need. All right, so we'll walk back up here. Get us a handbrake. Uh, where's it at? There we go. Make our cut. We'll be good to go. Oh, it's on partial. I didn't know that. I thought we had that closed. Wow, no wonder it was kind of draggy then. Man, I didn't realize that was cracked. 
I don't know what point that happened when we did that, honestly. All right, we'll take him ahead. We'll go over and we'll grab our loads and head back to Oglethorpe and we'll be good to go. A little bit of a longer video today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Just showing you like going through the motions. Ooh, we way fast. Way fast on that track. Slow down a little bit. There, go ahead and swing down. Get her stops. Kill that headlight. We don't need it anymore. At this point, we give him a hand signal, let him know to come forward. He knows we're up in the clear. We can see it. Well, actually, we're on the offside. We should be on the other side, on the engineer side, but. Ugh, my nose is itching. Yeah, we should have been over there. It's all right. Start easing them down a little bit. Oh, we stopped like a hair short, right? Yeah, we sure did. Just like a hair. There we go. All right, let's hop down. Let's get them laced. Parcel on that. I think they should be all good to go. We'll double check. We'll draw them down, check the brakes on the bottom here, and we'll be good to go. I should need to open that up all the way. Before we do that, yeah, it's looking good. All right, open. All right, knock her head brake off. That one's good. We'll check two more past. You know what? We better check all of them because you never know. These guys, with these industries, when they're spotting these cars up, they may have them like all throughout it. Yeah, it looks good too. All right, we're good on that. Go ahead and hang our flag. All right, draw them down. No, oh, yours not coming up. Does it open the whole way or maybe we didn't open this other car here? I don't know. We'll double check and see. That's why we do this, right? <clears throat> That's why we do it. Absolutely. Something's going on with it. Yeah, yeah, this isn't enlaced. All right. That would be why. All right, yeah, we're going to fudge on this a little bit. I got to go. I got somewhere to be at lunchtime. This, this is kind of taking a little bit. So we know we got continuity through the brake pipe. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and hop on ahead in and go. It's only a handful of cars. It'll be fine. But yeah, you draw them down. You make sure you got brakes. You're good to go. Check everything. All right, let's hop in. We're in reverse. Make sure we got our headlight on bright. That's good. All right, guys. There you go. Let's blast off. That's it. That's basically it. That's like the very basics of it. You get the gist. 
So you can do as much of this stuff as you want. Like, you, you know, you don't have to do anything realistic if you don't want to. You just switch the cars and be done with it. Or you can do the whole nine yards. Like, it's all up to how you want to play the game. All right, we're just going to go ahead and go with it. We delayed in the block. We like, you know, um, we came in on a clear, so we should technically be able to run down to the next signal and just looking out. Well, we're going to go with it. I'm pressed for time, so we got to go. We're going to go just like we got light. Yeah, I'm trying to think how that would go down. We came in on a, we came in on a light. We were clear. We delayed in the block, so we should just be able to run to the next signal, looking out, like prepared to stop. Like I said, that it's been so long. That stuff gets really fuzzy to me. All right, we got to approach on a distant to uh, Oval Four. Yeah, this is kind of. Uh, Kind of taking a hot minute to do. That's the thing about railroading, right? It takes a minute. Even the simplest of things takes a minute. And uh, Spur's got to meet Mrs. Spur for lunch in a little bit. <laughs> I can't be late for that. Like, I got to... We got to get this done. We got to go. We can't mess around. We got to go. This place right here, this spot, this straightaway coming up to this light down here, man, it'll run you fast on a little train. It's one of those spots you have to watch. If you own a little short bowling ball, you better watch this straightaway right here. Like you'll be doing okay speed wise and next thing you know, she'll just take off. little bit of a slide right there all right so we got to approach on a distant Oglethorpe we should be lined in. Of course, we don't know that for sure, so we gotta go around there prepared to stop. See what our distance is here, because I don't know. Oh, come on. Uh, 10 and 1.6 miles, so we got a little ways to go. I forgot we got all loads we could technically run 60 if we wanted to because we're all loads let's kind of go along with it here yeah 55 yeah so speed wasn't an issue i wasn't even thinking about that i was thinking of us being freight train speed with empties but we don't we have all loads so we would in fact be a 60 mile an hour train if we could do it, we definitely could do it. All right, start slowing down. Our speed's doing here. It's not easy to run, I'm telling you. 
It's really just not like you can't see Jack, right? Man, you really just can't. Like, I couldn't even see her light. We're going to say we had a restricting. I'm sure we did. I lined us in. Like I said, in real life, you wouldn't know for sure. The conductor over there isn't doing anything. Like, he's not telling us. All right, 10. All right, we're good on that. All right, we'll ease on in here in the clear. And we'll call it a day. Man, I forgot how tough Longwood Forward was. Any of you guys that play Run 8, do y'all ever run uh, Longwood Forward on your locals? Do you always take two? I see a lot of people usually take two units. I mean, two units puts it in easy mode, right? Like you've got, you've got exactly what you need to go either direction. Long good forward though. That's a whole different story. All right, let's uh we're gonna dismount here. Oops. Check our switch. Yeah, we had that one lined back. It showed us that we got a switch open. Maybe it's down here. Oh, it's that one. Yeah, we left that one. Okay. Bad conductor, bad. Maybe someone else got that. Yeah, maybe someone else got that for us. Let's get this one. And let's line us in on this track right here. All right, everything's lined and good to go. Let's hop back in. So about 10. 10 seems like slow as molasses now after running 60. All right, yeah, Spurs running late. Like, I don't want to be late for my lunch date, so we're going to end this one right here. Basically, we would take this thing down in the yard and cut it off and then spot our engine back up. You, you guys know the routine. If you know run eight, you know the routine. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell, leave me a comment. Love all of you, and uh, we'll catch you on the rails next time. Peace. Powerful, I don't think... Slam on the brakes. If you're not sitting down, you are now. <laughs> what? No, no, big cat, no, <laughs> stop. Oh, no.